Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to me reviewing Alice the Madness Returns. Um, this is going to be a almost not quite, maybe sort of kind of first impressions. Um, I have played through, uh, I want to say about an hour, hour and a half, something like that, of this game. Um, kind of just to try to get a feel for it and what it is. It's, it's been a game that I've had for a little bit, and it's something that I've wanted to play for a while, but, uh, you know, I, kind of basically my excuse for most of the games that I've had is I just ha simply haven't had time. And I felt that for, for purposes here, maybe I'd get into the game, play through it a little bit, and see what I can do. Um... Now, it, it's, uh, I will warn you guys now, it's a little bit grim and kind of disturbing, so if you have some issues with, with stuff like that, you may or may not want to watch this. That said, um, I am actually going to go ahead and get into it, and we'll just kind of continue from where I was. Hopefully it won't show too much of, uh, of the story or anything, and just kind of give you a little bit of basic idea about gameplay. I'm going to see exactly where I'm at. Okay, so... At, it actually kind of restarted me at the last place. Um, I, I had played through some of this already. I'm not sure if it's going to give me credit for the items that I collected or not. Uh, and we'll, we'll figure that out here pretty quickly. Uh, no, actually, I did not get credit for anything that I collected. I was hoping that uh, collectible items were something that, that triggered a save, but they apparently don't. So right now, so far, I have two weapons, with one of which is a uh, basically a kitchen knife. Um, which is, as in uh, Lewis Carroll's stories, the Vorpal Blade. I'm assuming it takes on the takes on the traits of the owner, and uh, that's um, that's what she has, uh, you know, because it's Alice. The other thing she has is a pepper grinder, and I shit you not, it basically it's a gun, and it overheats. It has no ammunition, but um, it's it's. Fairly briefly, briefly lived, although you can upgrade your weapon, so I'm assuming that that's one of the things that are improved is, is how long it'll last before it, it overheats. The whole thing is a little bit silly, but um, the game in and of itself, um, actually, one of the things I wanted to mention, is, and one of the things that I noticed fairly quickly, is the game is actually stuck with V-Sync and... Um, um, V-Sync turned on, and it's 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 got a, a max limitation as to how many frames per second you can run. That's one of the things that um, pretty much anybody has. Uh, there's a, there's a whole bunch of uh, different guides and stuff about. Oh, I missed that. Hold a, a whole bunch of different guides and stuff on Steam about that and how to fix that. That would actually be one of the first things that I would suggest doing, just because it um it definitely improves your gameplay. My, I, I was a little bit concerned when I first started playing it because I knew the game was kind of old um, and I was running it at 30, 30 frames per second so I decided to look into it um, because my hope was to be able to record it. Ah, uh, there we go. Um, and I was having some issues with that. So obviously that is something that you're going to want to take a look at. The other thing is um, fairly early into the game you get this shrink ability. Is Alice is known for her shrinking, so I mean that's that's not too terribly uncommon for her, but it kind of opens up other areas that you don't really necessarily that you can't see normally when you're normal height. So it, it kind of gives you this like these platforms. They're I would almost describe it as like a chalk outline, and kind of it fades away as you as you progress. So. You want to either stay in, stay shrunk long enough to see it, or um, you know you you want to kind of find a way to to make it work for you. Obviously, uh, you don't want to miss like like I did the first time. Now that that is one of the things. Um, I haven't actually died dead yet, so I'm not terribly certain how that works. I do know that if you fall off a cliff, the game is actually fairly forgiving about that. Um, as you saw, I just fell off and uh, it put me back up on the ledge where I started. Uh, one of the other things that the pepper grinder can do is there are pig snouts. You season them. Yeah, the game's a little weird that way. Uh, this, do this does tend to open up, um, uh, you know, secrets and kind of uh, private areas that you haven't been to or that you haven't been able to get to before. Uh, you actually do have a pretty good ab ability to um, float around. So that's actually really good. I thought that there was something 
house here. Um, I guess not me. Oh, right, it's, okay, never mind, just ignore me. Anyway, um, so the game it, itself, once you've, yeah, here we go, let's fall off a cliff again. Once you've actually gotten yourself so, uh, sorted out with the with the V-Sync and turning on your your max frames per second, I would I would suggest 120. I mean, obviously that's not going to mess with you too too much one way or the other. And if your if your video card can't handle 120 frames per second, that's fine. Um, it won't mess it up. But if it can handle it, then obviously it's going to make your make your experience a little bit smoother and and. Um, Definitely something that you'd want to do. I, re I felt to just set it at 120 figuring yeah, my my monitor is actually only uh, 60 hertz I believe so it can't go any higher than that but um, it can't go any higher than 60 frames per second that will be noticeable to me but at the same time it winds up um, just giving me a, a ceiling and if I ever upgrade my monitor or anything else like that obviously it's, it's going to be um, uh, yeah, this is, it's always a little bit weird when you walk into... Okay, yeah, I'm completely... Uh, completely messing this whole thing up. Anyway, um, my suggestion is turn it up to 120 frames per second. That's that's obviously going to give you your best experience, or, or even higher if you think your card can handle it. Um, as I said before, the game is actually kind of grim in certain areas, especially when you first start out. Uh, you start in the real world, and then you kind of go to... Uh, Wonderland and, and Wonderland seems to get more corrupted the further you go into it but when you first get into the real world it's it's actually kind of messed up there too so um, it's no wonder she wants to escape to her own fantasy land that said I'm not sure that the fantasy land at this point is any better than the real world was so we'll kind of see um, you do have multiple stages of jump. Uh, it, that's not something that's earned, although it would be it would have been amusing to see that become something, it, you know, be earned. Um, it doesn't really surprise me. It kind of makes the game fairly open as far as, as the world. It makes you able to get to a lot of different places very quickly from the beginning. And it kind of gives you... It, it gives the game an artistic style that that makes sense, so I'm not gonna blame it. I'm not gonna blame them for doing that. I, I I have seen it done either way. It was a little confusing to me at first as to why do you why do you have this ability to jump so many times or so or for so far when you first get started. But the more I play it, the more it makes sense. That, hey, you know, look, they're not completely limiting you when you first get started. Um, as far as gameplay, as far as the style of it goes. It's kind of a dark version of like maybe the old uh, the old 3D Zeldas, or um, or even a little bit of a Metroidvania kind of thing. It's it's very distinct in the style and the and the way it plays. Actually, it's pretty smooth. I mean, I don't, I haven't had any I haven't had any issues. I mean, Alice's hair moves around, and this is a game that's actually pretty old. So, um, you know. There's a more recent game where everybody talks about, well, man, there's there's a setting completely just for the hair. But that said, considering the age of this game, um, which I want to say is four or five years old now, uh, it does pretty fantastically, um, all things considered. I could be completely wrong about the age of the game, but the, the graphics, uh, they're not really terribly dated. Um, I mean, they're not the best I've ever seen, but for what it does, it's actually still... Um, a very solid, uh, solid entry into the into this particular genre as far as um, the way it looks and the way it feels and the way it plays. It's very smooth. I actually was a little bit hesitant to go uh, to play it in uh, with the controller at first, just because I noticed that there was an ability to go into first person mode. Um, but that really does not detract from the game. Actually, it doesn't even seem like I can do that anymore here. Uh, that just brings up my gun, which is which is fine. It doesn't. Uh, not using the mouse doesn't detract at all from the gameplay, and I dare say it might even be if you're used to using a uh, controller for 3D platformers, that might even be your better route. Although that said, it didn't seem it didn't feel like the uh, the keyboard controls were any bad or anything like that. Um, as far as the game itself goes, the story is. As I said before, fr 
rather disturbing and very dark, but it's also very engaging. It finds it finds a way to draw you and keep playing. I wasn't really planning on playing it for real long before I started this, and an hour and a half later, I realized, wow, I've been doing this for a little while. And it's it's very good at ooh, yeah, these guys. Give me just a moment. These guys are actually really kind of rough. There we go. Uh, no. You do have a dodge ability. Um, kind of makes killing some of these guys a little easier. But, um, the shielded guys I've had some trouble with. There we go. Alright, so, um, health seems to be done pretty similarly to everything, uh, to other games of the genre, as I said. Um, it has a, a real kind of a Zelda feel or something like that to it. So it doesn't, it doesn't come across as uh, copycatting, though. I mean, it's, it, it has its own artistic flair to everything, and what it does for itself, it actually does quite well. And I appreciate that in the game. It just, it, it accepts the fact that most people are, are used to playing a particular style, or a particular game in a particular style, and, um, uh, we're gonna do this with this just for fun, just to kind of show you the way that works. It, it, it does accept that, that most people are playing a game like this in a, with a particular style and a particular feel for it, but it doesn't, it acknowledges that without copycatting it too much. And now it does tend to slow things down. Wow, that was bad. It tends to slow things down right before these guys hit. Uh, yes, sir. It tends to slow these guys down right before they hit to kind of give you a feel for, hey, look, they're gonna hit you. But if you don't time it exactly right, it will kill you. They are actually pretty dangerous. So that is something to keep in mind. I am playing it on normal. Um, I felt that my experience with games like this would be, oh man, would give me a, at least enough of a hand that I could play through it on normal, but as you guys have seen, it is, it is a little difficult. It does have a difficulty curve, which is good. I mean, it's, it's not, you know, hand holding you through it, through, through itself from the beginning. Kill this guy again without dying this time, preferably. Let's see what we can do. I mean, the other the other problem with these guys in particular is that you don't run across too many of them. So when you do see them, it takes you a little bit of time to to, to adapt to it. That said, um, I don't want to say that there that there's not enough combat. When there isn't combat, there's a bunch of other stuff that tends to go along that gives you the feel of, of the game progressing, so you don't, it's not as combat intensive as, as a lot of other games, especially like the later on Zeldas and stuff, there, there's just so much combat in those games, and this one doesn't have as much combat as those, and I mean, I, obviously you're not necessarily seeing that here, because this is probably one of the biggest combat areas I've seen so far. Um, and that's kind of, that, that really has been. Get your fork away from me. Ah. Okay, so, yeah, having a little bit of problems with the camera. Isn't something that you can't control? Uh, I, would, I would imagine that controlling the camera would be a little bit easier with the mouse, but it's still, if you're used to 3D platformers with, with a keyboard, or sorry, with a controller, um, this one does kind of do well with that. Um, I don't want to say that the, the, the camera is horrible. I just want to say that there's, there's one or two places where if you get locked in a corner, it might be a little bit frustrating. Um, although then again, you do have the, uh, as you were seeing, the dodge ability, which is basically a teleport. Um, 
and that might that might be good to get you out of a situation like that or you know you always you can always jump really high and that's that's another good thing so um where it does get you stuck that you do have options to get away and get out of it and drop in frames every now and then which is a little bit frustrating but that's probably just because i'm recording um I haven't had any issues with the game itself uh, without recording since I've up since I've upped the frames per second. So that's that's kind of been at least that has been pretty stable and pretty solid. And and as long as you're not recording, I don't imagine that you'd have too many problems with it itself. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, the flowers usually mean that there's a secret around here. Wow, that's quite a ways away. I'm not even sure if I can reach that from here. But, let's see what we can do. Ooh, wow, yeah. Alice can jump quite a ways, um, as I've mentioned already. And the invisible platforms don't go away, you just can't see them once. So if you know where they are, you can still land on them and use them, or walk around on them and whatnot. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, that's kind of my, my impression of the game. It's a, a very dark, very interesting take on Alice in Wonderland. If you've played American McGee's Alice, I believe this is the sequel to that. I have not personally played that. Um, I wanted to forever ago, and I never, I, it was, again, one of those games that I just never got the opportunity to play, which I am a little bit disappointed in, and in fact might even go hunt a copy down just so I can just so I can experience that but this game is is a very solid game it, it grabs your attention and um, the the few down points that it does have it more than makes up for with with in style and um, and uh, just just the feel of the game I mean even in just in, in the different areas I've already seen it. Alice's dress changes every time that she goes to a new area so, I mean, even in just that, you kind of have these different areas that, as they open up, just the whole feel of it changes. The last one, uh, the last area started out, er, yeah, you start in, I would say, you know, 15th century or 16th century London, and then you kind of go into, um, uh, you go into this completely wooded area that's, it's just the style completely changes and everything opens up, and there's all kinds of colors, and it's, it's really kind of interesting and then that changes to something else and then that changes to this and every time every time there's a change you know it's it's very obvious it grabs you it, it gets your attention um but there are definitely characters in here that you would recognize from uh, from the series um you know it's not just pigs and and um it's not just pig noses and and random imps trying to kill you there's a lot of stuff that you guys would obviously recognize from the series uh, or from the other game and from the cartoon as well. So, um, anyway, with that, I think I am going to let you guys go here. Uh, very good game. I would I would recommend, especially if you if if it came out on sale and whatnot. There have been some some pretty decent Steam sales on this thing, and I think that was where I got it at one point or another. Um, I would definitely recommend if you're looking for a game that's that's. As I said, kind of in the same genre as one of the 3D Zeldas or Metroidvania, something like that. Um, a very solid title with with a very engaging story. This would definitely be something that you'd want to you'd want to take a look at and check out. Anyway, um, thank you guys for watching. I will catch you later. Bye.